Hello. Okay, so self-doubt and liberation. Welcome to the masterclass. I'm going to give you tons of value in this masterclass, okay? I'm going to give you so many tools to help you understand why it is that you doubt yourself, how to overcome self-doubt, like real practical tools that are going to help you to literally move past your blocks. So you're going to get some wins from this class, okay? But we're going to go so much deeper than that. So first of all, thank you for joining me. Um, you should be receiving this in your inbox. Now, I was going to do the live, but with the time difference in Bali, it's actually really, really tricky for me to do live. So I've decided to record this and send this out to you. Um, you will always have access to this, to this class. So what I want to do, first of all, before we go any further, is I want to actually share my screen with you. Right. I want to share my screen with you. And I want to, because I do have some slides to help support us. Get a pen, get a notebook, get a pad, get whatever it is that you need to get. Make sure that you get some water, okay, as well. Stay hydrated throughout this class. Um, so first of all, before we go any further, what I want to do is I want to, like, I've already thanked you for coming, but honestly, I am so grateful that you take the time to listen to what I've got to say. And I really, really understand what it's like to feel self-doubt. But I don't think that people understand the deeper layers to self-doubt. And I really want you to understand the core root to the problem so you can move forward from it. So let's just, before we go any further, let's make sure that you're in the right place, okay? So this is um, the perfect, perfect class for you if you are somebody who has a habit of speaking negatively to yourself. Now, I know we can all do it, but... If you are constantly putting yourself down, if you're constantly thinking negative thoughts and remember that your thoughts are really powerful, um, this is the perfect class for you, okay? This is going to really help you with that, to help you shift your way of thinking and shift your perspective. Also, I know what this feels like and I had a client say this to me the other day that she feels trapped in her own life. So if you're someone who feels a little bit trapped and a little bit stuck, um, either in a situation, in a life, in a, in a relationship, in a job, then this is also going to be really, really helpful for you. If you find yourself in the same situations over and over again, you know, you're trapped, um, attracting the same kind of partners, attracting the same kind of people. Maybe you do things different, but you always get the same outcome. Maybe like no matter what you do, you always find yourself being the underdog or you always find yourself getting hurt or you always find yourself starting a job and they're not liking it starting a project they're not finishing it whatever it is if you're finding yourself in these repetitive patterns then this is definitely the perfect class for you um we all compare ourselves to other people right we've all done it but if you're finding that it's holding you back looking at other people thinking that you can't have what they have that you can't do what they do and because they've done it maybe you can't do it as well it's because they did it first um, or you're never going to be as good as other people then this is going to give you some really helpful tools to overcome that now, whenever we've experienced any pain or trauma or negative situations in the past, we can sometimes always expect that the worst is going to happen. Or maybe we're conditioned to be like that because that's how our parents or our friends or our family are. So if you're someone who's always looking at the negative and always thinks the worst is going to happen, then that is going to have a massive impact on what you believe you can and can't create in your life. So this is going to be so, so helpful for you because what you'll find you'll do is you start to sabotage. So sabotaging new relationships, sabotaging new projects, new routines, healthy habits, anything that you're sabotaging at all, this is going to be really helpful for you. Um, if you let how other people think about you dictate what you do, if you let how other people speak about you or they feel about you dictate what you do, then you are literally giving your power away to other people and their opinions. And what you're saying to your subconscious mind is that their opinion is more important than yours. And what they think is more important than what you think. And that is really, really disempowering. So this is going to be really helpful for you if you are one of those people. You might find that you have some of these traits of all this stuff I'm talking about. You might find that it's one thing in particular. You might find that you've got a mixture of all of them. And that's OK. OK, this is designed to meet you wherever you're at. So if you're afraid, that fear is one of the biggest things that holds us back. We make decisions from fear. We become stuck in indecision. And being stuck in indecision is one of the biggest ways to sabotage yourself. Because when you're not making a decision, you're not moving and you're not going anywhere. You're in limbo. Okay? If you make a decision and you're worried you're going to make the wrong decision, at least you're moving further away from what's not right for you and further towards what is right for you when you realize that that 
outcome and that decision was not right for you. You cannot make a bad decision. Every decision is moving you in the direction of where you need to go. So being stuck in a decision is a huge, huge block. And a lot of the time it comes from fear. But maybe you're afraid of other things. Maybe you're afraid of judgment or taking a risk or taking a leap of faith or putting yourself out there or fear of failure, you know. So many people are afraid of failure. So this is going to be really helpful for you. Again, lack of confidence, not having self-belief, feeling that you can't do what you want to do, thinking that you have no control over the outcome of the situations in your life. These are all going to cause you to sabotage yourself because you're going to think to yourself, well, what's the point? What's the point? It's not going to work anyway, so I might as well not try. And this can happen in relationships. It can happen in career, leaving your job, starting a business, whatever it is that you want, okay? Your past relationships and experiences all like not just love relationships but all relationships and all experiences they all have a part to play in the future that your brain thinks it can create the wounds that are created because of these can cause us to create patterns that are ingrained within us and then they repeat in our life and i'm going to go more into that later but if you have past experiences and relationships that have left you feeling hurt have left you feeling wounded broken less than not worthy not good enough um, doubtful about your future, um, thinking the worst is going to happen, all these things, then this is going to be really helpful for you. If you compare yourself, overthink and overanalyze is a big one. Do you overthink and overanalyze things? Because if you do, that really comes down to a core root belief that you don't feel that you're good enough or capable. So this is going to be really important for you to take this class. And also some people I've worked with in the past feel like they are being punished for something like, oh, I'm being punished for something like I deserve this or it's because of things I've done in the past or I must be being punished for something. And when you get into that place, you can really slip into that victim mindset. And that's what you end up creating more within your life, because the patterns that are ingrained within you are what you create into your existence. Um, so this is going to be really helpful for you too. If you feel that you are afraid that if anything good happens or you do get your dreams, that you're going to fuck it up or you're going to lose it anyway, because that's who you are and that's what you always do, then again, we're going to go a bit more later into that, but this is going to be really helpful for you. Now, before we go any further, I have checked a lot of this for typos, but I am the queen of typos and we're keeping it real around here. And I make them on my Instagram, I make them everywhere. I check it a hundred times. And when I do these big, big presentations, I always seem to find more, they come out of nowhere. So if there are a couple in there, um, that's just who I am. And yeah, self-acceptance is something that I've actually practiced. I'm very good at what I do. Typos I'm not so good at. So I'm just gonna apologize in advance if there are any in there. But just quickly rounding this bit up, maybe you don't know what it is that you wanna do or what it is that you want but you know it's not what you're doing right now, okay? This is going to help you get some clarity. Um, and if you find, this is a big, big, big one, but trying to control the outcomes of situations, trying to control the outcomes of your life, because either you freak out if you can't, or you're trying to protect yourself, or you're afraid, okay? Or you feel like if you do lose control, you're going to lose everything that you have. And that can be in friendships, relationships, work, I know for a long time I was trying to spin too many plates and it all came crashing down on me. Um, so if you feel that that's a problem for you, then that means that you have a problem with self-trust and surrender. And this is going to be really helpful for you as well. If you find, now this is the thing about self-doubt, right? It's not like we walk around thinking that we're doubting ourselves every day. Often there are masks and traps that mask our self-doubt in the forms of different behavior. And it might look like overwhelm, hiding, procrastinating, hesitating, feeling like you can't do something, shrinking back and playing small, distraction and avoidance techniques and behavior, you know, all these things, telling yourself that something else is more important, that you'll save it for next time, telling yourself a story, okay? So if you are that person who tells yourself a story, you make excuses, you blame other people, you tell yourself a story how it's not the right time, it's not perfect yet. This is self-doubt, right? And it's being masked as avoidance and, and distraction techniques. So if this, all this behavior is you, then this is the perfect class for you. 
because you might find that you never stick to your plans or you make you don't make a plan you have a big dream and you don't make a plan all of these little things you know ticking things off your to-do list all the things that you're ticking off seem productive but not the actual one thing that you need to do to take you to that next level of your life right I call that productive procrastination <laughs> Um, if you struggle, you tell yourself a story how I'm just not motivated, I have no willpower, um, I'm just not disciplined enough. These are stories that you tell yourself that come down to self-doubt. So it's really important that we get into that today. And if you feel that you're struggling with abundance and money, you're struggling with anything in your life, you're repeating a lot of limiting and negative habits, then this is going to give you some tools to overcome it. But mainly, I want you to just take a moment, right? I want you to just take a moment and I want you to close your eyes before we go any further. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to just take a nice, let's just take a nice deep breath together. So before we go any further, I want us to just really feel into this, okay? I want you to close your eyes, feel your feet flat on the floor. And this is how I like to start anyway. And I want you to sit nice and tall so your spine is nice and straight. I want you to feel your shoulders relax down away from your ears, close the eyes and just notice if you're holding any tension anywhere. So start at the crown of the head and just start to soften all the way down the jaw, the eyelids, the shoulders, the chest, the abdomen. Notice if you're holding any tension there and just really start to relax all the way down. We're going to start with a nice grounding practice. So before we go any further, we're going to call all your energy back to you. So I want you to take a nice, slow, deep breath in through the nose, all the way up to the top of the chest. I want you to hold your breath there. And then open the mouth and really slow exhale through the mouth. Let's do one more of those deep cleansing breaths. Take a nice deep breath in. And as we breathe in, we're just expanding, creating space, breathing up to the top of the chest. And I want you to hold it there. When you hold it, it's that stillness. And then opening the mouth, just let all that tension and all that stale, stagnant energy go. <sighs> That's it. Now take a nice, slow, deep breath. And this time, when you get to the top of the inhale, you can just smoothly transition into an exhalation. And then I want you to just continue taking nice, slow, deep breaths for me, okay? And as you start to take those slow, deep breaths, we're just calling all your energy back to you now. Calling all your energy back that has been left with work, with clients, the kids, with your partner, with your friends, with family, with situations, people, places, memories. We're just calling all your energy back to now with every deep breath. I want you to just feel that energy returning to you. you exhale just really letting go and you might even visualize like little threads tiny little threads of energy around your entire body your energy field your aura just drawing in towards you sucking it all in calling all that energy back to you now And as you call all that energy in, I want you to start to direct that energy in your breath down towards the lower belly. So we start to ground into the breath a little bit more and the belly starts to expand with each breath. Slow and steady, guys, yeah? Taking your awareness to the base of your spine, which is your first chakra, your root chakra. And we're going to start to visualize your roots. So like roots of a tree coming out through the first chakra, down from the base of the spine, down 
with each breath getting thicker, with every exhale getting deeper, and they start to reach the very surface of the earth. And you might be in a flat, you might be in a house, but I want you to take those roots to the ground. And then as you continue to breathe, we're gonna to start to feel those roots penetrate the earth, through the earth, going deeper and deeper into mother earth. Every breath, just going deeper, and deeper and deeper through the rubble, through the rocks, through the little layers of the earth. And then you start to feel Mother Earth gently tugging on your roots and she starts to draw your roots deeper into her, so, so deep until they reach the ball, the center of Mother Earth's core. They start to wrap tightly around the center of Mother Earth's core. And you really start to feel that anchoring, that groundedness, that feeling of being secured and held and safe by Mother Earth. And I want you to just keep taking those slow, deep breaths for me. And as you continue to breathe, you start to draw her energy up through your roots into your first chakra starting to bring your awareness to your heart space and then taking your hands and placing them over the heart with the shoulders relaxed. And I want you to bring your awareness to your heart. Really focus now, okay? Focus your awareness to your heart. And as you focus your attention into your heart, into your heart, I want you to take that awareness into the back of your heart, really deep, really focusing now, focus is key, focus your awareness into the back of your heart and slightly down, Just slightly down, and I want you to ask your heart, what is it that your heart is yearning for, what are you longing for? What is it that your heart wants? And I want you to just allow whatever to come up, come up. I'm going to be silent in a minute. But I want you to ask, what are you longing for? What are you yearning for? Is it a relationship? Is it love? Is it give love, receive love? More passion, more fulfillment, more joy, more peace, more trust, more harmony, less suffering, whatever it is, yeah? Do you want to make an impact on the world? Do you want to leave a mark on the world? Do you want to share your gifts? Do you... Whatever it is, I want you to take a deep breath. Take a deep, deep breath now into the heart. Take your awareness into the back of the heart and down and then just ask your heart and I'm going to be silent now. Focus. Is it a thought, a feeling, an emotion, a vision, an inner knowing? What is it that your heart is longing for? Do you feel like you have more to offer the world than you currently are? Do you want more? Do you want more? Because I know what it's like to want more. All I know is that I've always, always wanted more. What is it that you want more of? What is it that you desire? What is it that you feel in your body, in your heart, in your belly, in your gut? What's the urge, that deep, deep, deep urge that you're feeling that you want more of in your life, that you want to express and embrace and birth more of into your life? And how is it going to feel when you have that? Connecting with your heart is so, so, so important. So important. Do you need more clarity? Do you just want to know who you are? What it is you came here for? <clears throat> Do you just want to know what's going to make you happy? Just really feel into that. I'm going to give you another 30 seconds, okay? 30 more seconds to feel into this. And I want you to really focus. I want you to really feel it. OK. 
Okay. Get ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, so if you are anything like me at all, I felt I got really emotional when I did that. And I felt like I have so much love to give. I don't need someone to love me because I know I'm worthy and good enough. But I have so much love to give, to love others. I want to make an impact on the world. I want to change people's lives. There's so much that came through to me. So, you know, I want you to write, really feel, feel free to pause this and write down what it is that came through to you because that is your heart's deepest, deepest desire. That is your heart's deepest longing. That is who you truly are. That's what you were born for, okay? But we get stuck in these cycles. We get stuck in these cycles that keep us trapped in limitation. And this is why I called this self-doubt liberation, because we are a slave to our own mental fear and doubts. If you're ready to break that cycle that you feel stuck in, and you might be aware of what your patterns are, or you might not be aware of what your patterns are, Okay, but if you know that you're ready to stop sabotaging and you're sick of settling for crumbs, you're sick of settling for less than you deserve, you're sick of settling for a life that is less than you want, then this is your time to really break past that. Maybe it sometimes feels like you're doing something wrong. You might have tried many things in the past. I work with so many people that have been to therapy, they've been to this, they've been to that. They come to me as a last resort and we really clear it for them. And I'm not saying this to be big-headed, but, big but I know the work I do is powerful. I go into so many dimensions of your soul. I go, do the deepest work that I have ever known. I go all the way up and all the way down. I go into the ancestral line. I go into the karmic lines. I go into oaths, promises. I go into past lives. We do not leave a stone unturned in this work that we do, okay? I do not leave a stone unturned. I cover everything, and we really remove those patterns because some of them are so deeply ingrained, so, so, so deeply ingrained. So you might have tried many things, you know, and maybe now it didn't work out, so now you're afraid to try again because you're afraid that what happened last time is going to happen again. Or maybe you're afraid that you'll make the wrong move and you'll mess everything up. And that is enough to make you feel frozen. If you know that your self-doubt and your fears are becoming bigger than your desire, then this is a sign that you need to change and finally do something about it. Because your desire should always be stronger than your doubt when you are fully empowered. And a lot of people talk about taking your power back. But I'm talking about being in control of the reality of your life right? Because when you are not, don't believe that you're in the control of the reality of your life, you don't even try because you don't see the point in trying and your subconscious will always hold you back. But we go deeper than the subconscious, okay? So if you've ever had this feeling that, or this deep inner knowing that maybe you don't have what it takes, or maybe it's just never going to happen for you, or maybe they're not good enough, or maybe you're not enough, then trust me, I see you, I feel you, because I know exactly what that feels like. I had so many layers and layers and layers upon not feeling good enough. Your relationships are a mirror for who you are. You attract the people that you are vibrating at. Your abundance of money is a mirror for the vibration that you're attracting at. And I didn't, when I realized that it was all connected, when I was with my ex-boyfriend for seven years, I always had this deep sense that I didn't feel good enough, that it was all gonna fall apart, that it, it, and it did, you know, because that's what I was vibrating, that's what I was feeling. But with the money, I, I've made loads of money. I was a dancer for years, I made loads of money. I could never hold on to it because I had this deep sense that I was not enough. So I never had enough money, it was never enough. Nothing was ever enough. And everything I had was never, ever, ever enough because I never felt like I was being provided for. I never felt safe. I never trusted myself. And all of this stuff contributed to me not feeling good enough. So all I was doing was attracting and creating more situations in my life that made me feel not good enough. And this is what happens. This is the way the soul works. 
it attracts situations that are a vibrational match for you because your soul wants you to learn the lessons that you need to learn because your soul has come here to evolve. You chose here to be human, to evolve. And the way that we evolve is to learn lessons. And the way that we learn lessons is through situations and experiences in, in our life. So when you are attracting experiences and situations in your life that make you feel a certain way, it's because you have not completed that lesson, okay? And this is the work I do. I help you complete that lesson. But for today's masterclass, I'm going to give you some tangible tools as well. It's not all going to be woo. A lot of that is for Unraveled. But this is going to help you overcome the self-doubt. Because self-doubt is the opposite to confidence. Self-doubt is a decision not to try. Self-doubt is overanalyzing, overthinking, and then thinking to yourself, wait, what could go wrong here? And then you get stuck in what we call a self-doubt loop. And it's just your brain's way of protecting you, okay? It's just your brain's way of protecting you because you are wired this way. Because you are wired this way. So I'm going to talk a little bit about self-doubt, right? I'm going to talk a little bit about self-doubt that's going to help you understand why it is that you doubt yourself and what self-doubt actually is. So let me just move this screen around. Okay. Like I said, self-doubt is the opposite of confidence and self-doubt is the decision not to try. But it's a habit. Self-doubt is a habit. So when you understand how to overcome these habits and these self-doubt loops, you start to understand why your brain hesitates in the first place. Your brain's number one goal is to keep you alive at all times. It's survival, yeah, and it's efficiency. Your brain does not give a fuck about your hopes and dreams and happiness. All it cares is about evolutionary psychology. It shows us that all it cares is about survival. And the way that your brain hesitates and responds is with fear. So when we originally were evolving, there was a lot of threats and there was a lot of risks out there. There might have been predators. There might have been, you know, if you didn't get accepted into a tribe, maybe you were left out there and you'd have less chance of eating and you'd be more um, succumbed to being attacked by predators and you would have been in danger. Your life would have actually been in danger. But now those threats, they don't exist anymore because of the society that we live in. However, the brain is still wired to warn us from uncertainty. The brain is still wired to warn us whenever we step into unfamiliar territory. The brain is still wired to warn us in any time that it perceives danger. And danger could be risk, feelings of discomfort, fear of failure, embarrassment, not knowing the outcome, uncertainty, all these things. So it starts with that immediate feeling of hesitation and resistance, like what's going to go wrong? Hold on, wait, what's going to go wrong? And you, you get the urge to do something and then boom, you get this you get this fear, like the brain wires, bang, fear. Oh no, what could go wrong? Something's going to go wrong. Hold on a minute, something's not right here. And that's why we hesitate. And that is why we doubt ourselves. That's what self-doubt is. And we get stuck in what we call this self-doubt loop because your brain hesitates. And it gets you to start overthinking because the way that the brain warns us is to start overthinking. And it stops you from taking the action that you need to take. But then because you didn't take the action that you need to take, you doubt your ability to take action. And because you didn't take action and you weren't successful with whatever it is that you wanted to do, you develop sort of self-doubt, right? And this leads to more overthinking the next time that something comes up. And the circle spins round and round and round and round until you break that cycle. So get your pen and paper out, okay? Because this is where I'm going to give you some tools that are going to overhelp, that are going to help you overcome your self-doubt. This isn't going to be me just banging on about a program. I hate it when people give masterclasses and then they just try and sell you something. This is actually going to give you some tools. So there are four steps to break the cycle, okay? Four steps. Number one, understand that the emotions that you are feeling are normal. The hesitation, the fear, the overwhelm, the uncertainty, whatever it is, the anxiety. Emotions are normal. They're there to be felt. Emotions are just your inner world expressing to the outer world what is going on. Emotions are just energy moving through your body. Emotion. Energy in motion. You can block your emotions and cause more blockages, or you can allow your emotions to flow through you using your divine feminine energy, allowing your creative energy to flow. And instead of your emotions crashing down on you, you can let them flow through you and you can move past them. 
Number two, understand that your brain can be rewired. Your consciousness can be reprogrammed. Just because you feel that way now doesn't mean that you always need to feel that way. We can change that, okay? You can decide at any day that you don't want to be that person no more and you're going to start creating a different version of yourself. Take ownership of that. Take ownership of that because the biggest thing that holds people back is they don't own their shit and they don't take ownership. You can take ownership of that and understand that you have the power to change. Number three is understanding the four traps of self-doubt, which is what I'm going to show you next. And understand the one that you get stuck in the most, right? And number four is to take action. Take that action because you will understand then that your emotions are there, but you don't need to let your emotions stop you from taking the action that you need to take. So let's get back into sharing the screen. Let me make this big. Okay. So here is the first self-doubt trap. Hesitation, number one. Hesitation is triggered by uncertainty and that's not knowing the outcome of a situation. And it might look like, this is where self-doubt gets really sneaky, okay? Really sneaky. Because you think, you don't realise that you're doubting yourself and what you're doing is you're waiting, you're overthinking, you're acting busy. You're, oh, I need to do the cleaning. Oh, I need to do this. Oh, what could go wrong? Oh, it's not the right time. Oh, it needs to be perfect. I need to know more. I need to do more. I need to wait for the right time. All these things are self-doubt, right? But you don't realise it because it's a trap and it's being masked as looking busy. And it might tell yourself a story of what could go wrong. You might not put something out there till it's perfect. You might make a plan and not act on it. You might have a to-do list and not do the things on it. You might stay busy with distracting yourself doing other things like the cleaning or the cooking or looking after the kids or creating content instead of doing your live on Instagram, whatever it is, right? Creating your business and doing the website and spending hours perfecting the website but never putting yourself out there to get clients. So what I want you to do is I want you to understand what hesitation looks like for you. What does hesitation look like for you, right? I want If this is something that you fall into, what does hesitation look like for you? And I want you to go away and I want you to journal this. If you're resonating with any of this stuff, go away after this class is finished and journal, what does hesitation look like for you? Does it look like, or pause this video now, pause it now, do it now. Does it look like doing the cleaning? Does it look like scrolling on Instagram? Does it look like going on Facebook? Does it look like doing the tidy and the cooking, looking after the kids? Whatever it is, yeah? This is why I'm glad I've recorded this now, because if it was live, you wouldn't have time to do this, but now you can pause it and you can do it now. The second, uh, the second thing I want you to do is ask yourself, what is it that you tend to tell yourself? What are the stories that you tend to tell yourself over and over again? They're just stories, yeah? But what are those stories? Because the key to change is awareness. The key to transformation, the first step is awareness. When you're aware of what it is that you do, when you're aware of what the pattern is, when you're aware of anything, that's when you can overcome it because that's when you're like, oh, I'm doing that thing again. Oh, look, I'm telling myself that story. Oh, look, I'm keeping busy with the cleaning. I'm doubting myself. And that's how you break the loop, right? Pause this video if you need to, okay, guys? What activities do you tend to do to avoid doing the thing that you need to do? What is it that you're doing instead of the thing you should be doing? <laughs> what is it that you actually overthink about? Is it, oh my God, what are people going to say about me? Oh my God, what if I get it wrong? Oh my God, what if this happens? What if that happens? Like, what is the actual thing that you are overthinking about? And then the final key is, what is it that you're wanting to be so perfect? What is it that you're waiting for to be perfect? And is that even achievable? So for example, oh, I'm waiting for, um, I'm waiting for my content to be perfect. Okay, but there's no such thing as perfect content. You just want to get it up there. And then when you evolve it as you go along and see how people like it, because what's perfect to you isn't perfect to other people. And people might really like the version of the stuff you've got now. And the way to overcome this is to start taking small baby steps. Instead of thinking of the big picture and all the things you need to do to get you to where you need to go and all the things that could go wrong, 
The best thing to overcome this is to break the situation down into tiny chunks and focus on that next step. And that is how we move forward. That is how we take action. That's how we feel the emotions, the fear, the anxiety, the dread, the worry, but we still don't let it stop us from doing what it is that we need to do, okay? So every morning, I want you to write down one thing that matters to you the most and one thing that you can do today to move forward. And it can be really simple, like having a conversation, researching something, buying a book, listening to a podcast, whatever it is, I want you to do that. And that is going to help you so, so, so much. Okay, so I'm just going to get through this, yeah, because I don't want to keep you on here for hours. But the next thing is hiding. How many of you are resonating with this? This is triggered by the fear of what other people think and being overwhelmed. Avoiding procrastination, shrinking back, staying behind the scenes. And the characteristics of this tend to be staying quiet. And the behaviors of this are focusing on big dreams that lead to overwhelm and using it as an excuse not to act at all and feeling paralyzed and frozen that you don't do anything. Not standing up for yourself and getting what you want or asking for what you want, not expressing your needs. So this is in relationships as well, you know. You might hide, you might not express your needs. Like You might find that you don't feel worthy or deserving of expressing your needs. Actively protecting yourself and holding yourself back, putting up walls, sabotaging, all these things, you know. Um, being able to identify a dream and feel passionate about it, but not having a plan that's actionable. And also shrinking back from opportunity and playing it small because you're afraid of being judged. You're afraid of looking like a fool or disappointing or upsetting either yourself or other people. So this is what you can do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you this um, sheet as well to help you. Identify what you're afraid of and minimize the fear. Where do you tend to hide and procrastinate? What is it that you're really afraid of? Is it to do with work? Do you tend to hide when it comes to putting yourself out there on a dating app? Are you afraid to go dating again because of what happened last time? Are you afraid to start a business? Are you afraid to go on Instagram? Are you afraid to go for that job that you want in the city that you've been talking about for ages, but you don't think you're qualified or good enough and the fear of rejection is so scary that you actually don't even try. So you stay in that shitty job doing the thing that you don't want to do and you're actually unhappy. And you're miserable and you wake up every day and you hate your life and you think, what the fuck am I doing? How did I get here? What am I doing? This is what I want. Not that. But you don't ever do anything to move forward. Does the thing that you're really afraid of matter? If you get rejected from that job in the city, if someone on the dating app, you go on a date and it doesn't work out. If you put yourself out there and he doesn't text you back. If you put yourself on a post on Instagram and it doesn't get many likes. Does it even fucking matter? Does it really matter that much? Does it actually matter? And if it does, what can you do about it? What can you work on? What can you overcome? And then the next thing you want to do is you want to identify the avoidance mechanisms that you use to procrastinate. What do you do instead of the thing that you should be doing? Again, what are you doing instead of the thing that you should be doing? So when you're doing it next time, you know that you're avoiding. Yeah? Awareness. <laughs> what is it that you actually want? What is the big dream that you're using to overwhelm yourself and stop taking action? And then what I want you to do is I want you to take that big dream and I want you to break it down into 10 sub goals. Yeah? 10 little goals. Because it's so big at the moment, it's overwhelming you. So break it down. And every day, take one small step that you can progress and move forward. I had a client once who did eyelash extensions and she wanted to create her own products and sell them. And it was such a big thing. And we had to sit there and we just broke it down into 10 actionable steps. And when she saw it like that, it was so much more manageable for her. And she lost the overwhelm and moved forward. These are really powerful tools, guys. And I don't actually give these away for free normally. So you're very lucky. This is really going to help you. Okay, the next one is being hypercritical, and this is really complaining, being negative, putting yourself down, focusing on your flaws, focusing on why you can't do it, fixating on what could go wrong, um, pulling things apart, putting them to death, knowing what you need to do, but always having an excuse as to why it won't work, or just simply believing that you can't, or it's just not possible for you. 
This is really triggered by fear of being hurt, disappointed or failing. Okay. And if you find that these tools are helpful, which they will be, but you want to go deeper into this fear of being hurt, the wounds around being hurt, the wounds around disappointed, the wounds around not feeling worthy and caring about what other people think. Because let me tell you one thing now, when you are worried about what other people think, it comes down to self-worth. Because you are, it comes down to a core belief that you feel you need to be approved by others to be worthy. And you don't feel good enough because other people you need that validation from other people and if you're someone who's always constantly looking for validation if you're someone who's constantly shopping or trying to fill that void going on holidays to fill that void of not feeling happy this really comes down to self-worth okay a lot of us believe that we have these surface level beliefs and we do we have a belief here we have a belief here a belief here and one will trigger another one and then they'll all work together against you but there's always a core root belief that's supporting them. If you think of a pack of cards, like a pyramid pack of cards and the ones at the bottom, yeah, you can pull the cards at the top and you'll start to suspend all the pyramids slowly, slowly, bit by bit. You might start to pick away, pick away, pick away at it. But if you pull the bottom cards out, the whole lot comes crashing down and you dismantle the whole lot. And it's a much more effective and faster way of getting to the root cause of the problem. Because I believe if you don't get to those root core beliefs that the problem always resurfaces and comes back, which is why I personally believe that mindset work only gets you so far. If you don't feel good enough, if you don't feel worthy, if you feel that you don't feel good enough or worthy unless other people are believe, believe, telling you and they believe you are, and that's stopping you from moving forward, yeah, you can reprogram yourself over and over again. You can tell yourself, I'm worthy, I'm worthy, I'm worthy. And you can really try to reprogram yourself. But unless you heal the wound as to why you don't feel worthy in the first place and what made you feel unworthy, then you will never truly feel worthy. And this is why healing is so important. And this is why Unraveled is so powerful because I literally unravel you layer by layer and we get into what is really going on. It starts to unravel. You pick up the thread. OK, I'm triggered by fear of what people think of me. And then you start to pick at that thread and we start to unravel. Well, actually, it's because I am worried about what people think. Well, actually, it's because I feel I need validation. Well, actually, it's because I don't feel good enough. Well, actually, it's because I don't feel worthy unless other people approve of me. And so I people please. And that's why I'm afraid to express my needs. Well, actually, that's because I have a deep wound that has caused me to feel unworthy, that has either been passed to me ancestrally, that has happened in this lifetime, or maybe it's a deep soul wound that has been created in other lifetimes that I brought into this lifetime with me, because as far as I remember, I've never felt good enough, right? It could be all of that. And this is why Unraveled is so powerful, because we start to unravel it and we get into the core root beliefs that are supporting these, all these other ones that are triggering each other. Maybe you don't feel good enough to be loved or you feel unlovable. Maybe you sabotage relationships because you're the fear of being hurt, disappointed or failing in a relationship. When I came out of my relationship, I felt like a failure. I thought I failed. It hasn't worked out. Oh, my God. I've been with this guy seven, eight years and I'm a failure. Like I couldn't keep him happy. No, it was nothing to do with me and who I am. It was everything to do with him and the fact that he couldn't communicate. He couldn't do this. He couldn't do that. But I made it mean about me. I made it about me. And what we do is when we get rejected, when we get hurt, when we go for a breakup, ask yourself, what am I making this situation mean about me? What am I making this situation mean about how I'm not good enough, how I'm not worthy, how I can't control anything, how I how I'm a failure, how I'm less than, you know? This is the thing. And what we do is we focus on the things that are bad about us. We focus on the things that we are negative about. We focus on our flaws and we pick ourselves apart and pull ourselves apart and we do it till we pull ourselves apart to death. And the thing is, we believe that we can't have a happy relationship and we can't because it's not possible. Or we can't find love, or we can't feel provided for, or we can't feel safe, or we can't feel supported, or we can't put ourselves out there to run the business. Whatever it is that your heart is longing for, right? We can't attract a lover that gives us respect. We can't do this. We can't do that. At the end of the day, these wounds are coming from programming. With these, this programming is coming from wounds that need to be healed. So this is going to help you have tools to move forward. But if you do want to go deeper into this, then I really recommend that you do Unraveled with me because it's always much deeper than what you think it is. But 
this is going to help you. So identify the excuses that you're using to hold yourself back. What excuses do you tend to use? What are you afraid of that's going to happen? And then we need to eliminate the excuse, all right? We need to eliminate the excuse. So for example, you want to start a business, but you fear that you won't be able to provide for yourself or provide for your family. So you have choices. One, eliminate the excuse by getting a job. Two, commit to giving your dream 100% no matter what, giving it your all. Or three, commit to giving your dream 100% for two months. And if it's not providing an income by then, get a job, but keep working on your business. What this C is doing is it's giving you solutions to move forward. Instead of focusing on all the reasons why you can't and all the things that could go wrong, you've actually got solutions to move forward. And this is going to help you move past your blocks. It's not about focusing on all the things you've done wrong. It's about finding solutions so you can move forward in a positive way. Okay, and the last one is helplessness. Now, if you are helplessness, I would really recommend that you do Unraveled for me because this is a much deeper, deeper issue triggered by insecurity. I mean, I'd recommend you do it with all of them, but this one in particular, it's really triggered by insecurity and low self-worth. Now, a lot of you don't realise that you feel unworthy. We just feel that we are afraid to let go of a relationship or walk away from a situation or let go of a job because we fear that there isn't something better out there for us and we could actually fall on our face and things could go wrong. That comes from a lack of self-trust, a lack of trust that there is better out there for you. Um, feeling that if we do get it right and we do succeed, that we're going to fuck it up, we're going to lose it, or we're going to lose everybody in our life. We might fear that you lose friends or you lose your partner or whatever it is, you know? Feeling that, you know, oh, this always happens to me. Um, why I must be being punished for something. Oh, it's my fault. I'm always doing this. This victim, defeatist, pity attitude. Nothing ever goes my way. People always hurt me. Why do people always treat me like this? You know, having every excuse in the book, like, oh, I can't do it because of this. Or I would do that, but this. Or I would do that, but that. Or even understanding that, you know, the poor me actually helps you get attention from other people and you're craving that attention to feel worthy and validated. Being dependent on others, dependent and dependent relationships, like feeling that you can't be happy unless you have this, feeling that you can't be happy unless that person's in your life, feeling that you can't do things on your own, that you can't be alone, feeling like you are afraid to be alone. That's a big, big, big one, right? Also feeling like the world owes you something. Well, this happened to me in my past and that happened to me in my past. Therefore, I deserve this. So all of these things, you don't believe that you can do it alone or you're afraid of being vulnerable because people might think you're weak. People might think you're soft. People might take advantage. You don't want to give your power away. So you put your walls up, you know, feeling, feeling like you want others to do it for you. Feeling that you can't do this on your own not taking responsibility for your life, feeling helpless, okay? And all these underlying feelings of anger and rage and disappointment. So this is where you probably should do Unraveled, okay? Because I'm not gonna go into this one now, but this is a real big, big, big topic. So if this is you and you are falling into any of these, you know, any of these at all, that I've just spoke about in self trap four, then this is something that you should really look at doing with me is unraveled. Okay. So we've gone into the self doubt traps, avoidance and distraction behavior. And I've explained a little bit how your self doubt is linked to your self worth, right? Because a lot of the reasons why we doubt ourselves is because we worry about what people think. We're afraid to put things out there. We're worried we're gonna get it wrong. We're worried that we're gonna fall on our face. We're worried that we're not good enough. We're worried that we're less than. We're worried that this, we're worried that that. And it's really always comes down to self-worth and you might not realize that link. So if you knew your, if you knew your sabotaging behavior was linked to self-worth, well done. But if you didn't, okay, this is what I'm here to show you because you might feel worthy, but you still might be doing all this behavior because often on the surface, 
in the front of our mind, we think, yeah, I'm deserving, I'm worthy. But these are deep, deep wounds, deep, deep blockages that are buried deep. And sometimes you can't see that for yourself. So if you care what people think of you, if you fear that you're going to fuck it up, if you fear you're going to get it wrong, if you do any of those things that I have just spoke about, then this is the, the link. This is because of your self-worth. There is a self-worth wound that needs healing, right? So I've given you the tools to move forward. But listen, mistakes that people make is they don't heal the wound, the self-worth wound, the self-love wound, the wound that we are not enough, that we are not good enough, that we don't have enough. And the thing is, your soul was created with access to unconditional self-love, unconditional self-worth, personal power, self-trust, all of these things, empowerment, but the wounds have created blockages to in your channel so you don't have access to those feelings, okay? So what I do is I open up your channels so you can start to access that. Access your unconditional self-love, access your self-worth, access your self-belief, access your self-trust, access your self-empowerment. And when you don't have self-worth, okay, and you have a wound around self-worth, you might have no self-belief. You might doubt yourself, self-doubt. You might sabotage, people-pleasing, putting other people on pedestals, putting other people's opinions before your own, changing your opinions to keep others happy, not liking confrontation, all of these things that come into people-pleasing, not wanting to rock the boat, not wanting to say no, not being able to express your boundaries, not being able to express your needs, settling for less than you deserve, settling for less than you want, attracting shitty partners, relationships that cause you pain, repeating toxic cycles of behavior or negative outcomes in your life that you just don't want anymore. And of course, feeling, fear and failure, fear and judgment, not losing your confidence in your self-esteem and always expecting the worst or fearing the worst to happen. Plus loads, so many other things. So if you're resonating with any of those habits, you have a self-worth wound that needs healing. And what healing your self-worth wound will do for you, okay? You might not have realized that you had a self-worth wound that needed healing. And you might have tried many things to overcome all of these, all of this, yeah? Self-doubt, self-belief, sabotage, people-pleasing. But the reason why it's so hard is because you have a self-worth wound that needs healing first. Because what happens is your soul has pain and suffering attached to it. And until we remove the pain and suffering, you're not going to be able to accept the new programming. That's why a lot of the stuff doesn't work, okay? We have to release the pain and suffering attached to the wounds so your soul can let go. And then you can welcome in the new programming. So what healing your self-worth wound, self what your healing your self-worth wound will do for you is remember it's the reason that you don't feel good enough or you don't feel enough, right? It's going to allow you to feel good enough. It's going to allow you to not give a shit what other people think of you. It's going to allow you to not fear failure. It's going to allow you to feel, not have self-trust. It's going to allow you to let go of the thing that's not serving you and trust that something better is coming in your way because you deserve it and you know it's coming. It's going to allow you to put your own needs first. It's going to allow you to say, no, thank you. I don't need that in my life. That's painful. I don't want that. You can't give me what I need. You can't give me what I want. So I don't want to settle for you. And the answer is no, thank you. It's going to allow you to exercise your boundaries and know what you want. It's going to allow you to know who you are. And that exercise that we did at the beginning of this class, where you really got onto your longings, it's going to allow you to make that happen, right? So let's talk about the patterns. And I'm going to show you the link now. Because as humans, we identify with our behavior. Oh, I'm afraid of failure because if I fail, it means I am a failure. I'm someone who always messes up. I am someone who never gets it right. I'm someone who never sees things through to the end. I'm someone who always starts things and never finishes them. I get excited and then I let go and I move on to something. I'm someone who can't see things through. I'm someone who sabotages. I quit. I'm not disciplined. I'm not motivated. Do you see that? I am. You think that's who you are, but it's not what it is. It's a pattern that has been ingrained into your ego. It's what we call an ego pattern. And the ego starts to loop. Because your mind is designed to repeat patterns. Efficiency, it's as simple as that. Your mind is designed to repeat patterns and it recreates them everywhere in your life. Oh, here you go, first typo. I didn't do too bad, did I? I normally have loads more. Everywhere in your life. 
and they're deeply ingrained into your consciousness and your mind. And these patterns are created from your wounds. These patterns are created from your traumas. These patterns are created from experiences. And they're so deeply buried that you might not even be aware that they're there and you can't identify them. So you believe that that is who you are. I'm someone who does this. I'm someone who does that. Now, these remember the subconscious mind will hide a memory from you of something traumatic and store it as a negative emotion. Also, you have ancestral wounds that come down to you that get passed down through the generational line. Also, you have past life wounds that have come with your soul. So it is so deep that sometimes you don't know they're there, right? Like, for example, if you watched my video of Tanya Rose Willis, we did a video on my Instagram talking about how we healed her pattern around love and pain and relationships. She didn't realize that she had a deep rooted ancestral belief that love is pain because along her ancestral line, her ancestors experienced pain in love and it created a belief that love is pain. And then that belief got buried deep in what we call the ancestral consciousness and it got passed down the wound. So she had a belief that love was pain. Therefore, she was attracting painful relationships into her life, but it was buried so deep that she couldn't see it because it was ancestral and it was deep and it was a wound that wasn't her wound. It was an ancestral wound that happened to her ancestors. So she didn't even know it was there until we worked together on Unraveled and I showed it to her. And then she was like, oh my God, yes. So they're deeply buried. You don't believe, you don't even know they're there, but it's but who you believe you are. So you're not someone who sabotages. You're not someone who's not disciplined. You're not someone who's not motivated. You're not someone who's always attracting shitty partners. It's a pattern that's repeating. That's all it is. You haven't learned that your ego is who you believe yourself to be, but it's not who you are. Your ego is what I do and what I have, what I do and what I have. It's who you believe yourself to be, but it's not who you are. You're simply repeating a pattern that has been programmed into you, just like your iPhone, just like your upgrades. It's just a pattern like your computer. Imagine you're your iPhone and you're the operating system. You've got an operating system and all these new apps and all these new things are coming in your life, are coming out, but you're on a slow operating system and it can't keep up with all the new things that you want. So what we're doing is we're upgrading your operating system so you can go for the things that you want because the reason you can't have them is because your operating system isn't efficient enough to match the things that you want, yeah? Yeah. You're repeating a pattern that's been programmed. So what we do in Unraveled is we clear the wound, heal the wound, clear the pattern, create a new pattern. And that's how you change who you are and that's how you create a different outcome in your life. We do shadow work, showing you how to reclaim your power because sh your shadow are the bits about you that you don't like. Your shadow is the bits about you that you reject, the bits about you that you deny, the bits about you that you don't think will be accepted or liked by other people, right? Your unhealed traumas and your unhealed wounds all get stored in your shadow. But the thing is, you can never escape your shadow because your shadow follows you wherever you go. So what you end up doing is you manifest from your shadow. So you manifest more situations that match your wounds. So you create more situations that hurt you, right? Or you manifest more disempowering situations where you're afraid and you doubt yourself and you can't move forward and you sabotage. And a lot of your, the bits, let me tell you one thing now, the parts of you that you don't like the most, the parts of you that you reject, the parts of you that you deny, the parts of you that you're ashamed of, you're embarrassed of, that you're running away from, that is where your magic is. That is where your gifts are. That is where your power is. If you can... Right, a lot of your energy gets trapped in the shadow when you reject parts of yourself because you're essentially rejecting who you are. All the bits that you, there are no bad parts of you. There are no bad parts of you. There are only unaccepted parts of you. There are only unaccepted parts of you, right? All those bits that you're rejecting and you're denying and you're like, oh, no, I don't like that about myself. Oh, I wish I could be like this. Why am I like this? Why am I like that? All those parts of you, when you put them away and you push them away, you're rejecting part, you become less whole. You become less complete and you do become less than. So really with the shadow work that we do, you turn around and you integrate. A lot of your energy gets trapped in your shadow. We integrate, we turn, we shine the light on all those bits of yourself that you don't like and you integrate them and shining light on those dark parts of you. It's very healing. And you take back your power and you become more whole and you become more complete and you become more alive. 
and you start to know exactly what you want and how to get it. You ditch your people pleasing, your approval seeking behavior. So you can start living your life of freedom and be liberated and freed from your thoughts that are enslaving you. Because when you have negative thoughts and you're trapped in your fears, you are enslaved to your fears. You can create freedom like I have. I can go anywhere in the world I want to live. I've spent three years creating this life of freedom. I can do what the fuck I want, when I want, how I want, yeah? And that is the best feeling in the world. But true freedom comes from liberating yourself and freeing yourself from your own mental thoughts and your own mental fear, yeah? From not giving a fuck what other people think of you, from not caring, from not feeling good enough, not good enough. We remove those unconscious patterns and fears using this powerful shadow work that holds you back because that's what's keeping you trapped and that's what's keeping you stuck. And as you start to integrate those parts of yourself that you're ashamed of and denying, you start to live a life that's more full. You start to live more fully, more holy, more alive. And when you put your hands on your heart and you feel your heart's deepest longings, deepest longings, they actually feel possible for you. You stop feeling overwhelmed with change and uncertainty and you start to evolve and go with the flow of life and you start to overcome that fear of judgment and that change and failure and you start to confidently tackle and be resilient and prepare for the changes that you need to make because you have full belief in your capabilities and the best thing is you let go of all those attachments that are keeping you trapped and leaving you stuck and making you feel disappointed the reason you feel disappointed is because you have attachments to the outcomes instead of embracing the mystery because trust me the universe has a much better outcome in store for you than you could ever imagine to be possible when I broke up with my ex, I was absolutely devastated. And then I met someone else who loved, made me feel amazing, so much better than he ever did. And I was like, oh my God, this is what it's supposed to feel like. This is what love is supposed to feel like. So if you close yourself off to those opportunities through fear, you're closing yourself to all that magic that is there for you. Don't do that because there is so much, there is infinite potential. There is infinite opportunity. There is infinite magic available to you. It's not a limited amount, it is infinite. Open yourself up to that infiniteness that exists within the universe and within the cosmos. Start to feel empowered by everything that happens to you and understand that you know there's a reason for everything and a different perspective and sometimes you just can't see it from where you are now. And this is gonna help you over, overcome your need to be perfect so you can start taking that step forward in your life. It's gonna allow you to make better choices, okay? It's actually gonna help you make decisions because it's your choices that create your reality, right? Relationship choices, career choices, life choices. Are you making choices from fear or are you making choices from desire? Are you making choices because you want it or are you making choices because you fear you can't have it? Start setting goals, intentions with you that are aligned with what you truly want, right? Instead of what you believe is expected from you. Instead of doing the shoulds and the words, this is what I should do, this is what da 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 overthinking it start living from the heart because that's going to really open up all that magic to you it's going to allow you to clearly communicate your needs with people without guilt because so many of us are afraid to express our needs because we feel guilty there's a little bit of us that feels that we shouldn't that we shouldn't and that's when you're blocking yourself okay how many of you want one thing but the way you act and the way you speak and the way you talk isn't even aligned with what you really want you're sending out mixed messages to the universe. And that's why you're not getting what you want. So now's the time to start overcoming this self-sabotage for good, okay? And the procrastination. And start taking action. Start understanding that there's more out there for you than you could ever dream to be possible. If you can heal your wounds and move past your limitations, manifestation becomes easy when you understand what it is that you want, get aligned with what it is that you want, start to take aligned action, surrender, and you start to feel worthy. And the biggest thing that you can have is inner peace because it is so tormenting to be overthinking and wanting something. It hurts to not have what you want. It hurts to not be able to create what it is that you want to create. There's nothing worse than feeling defeated and hopeless. And really, we want to start living from the higher self and, co and connect to your true soul purpose. So you can start stepping into creator mode. Because when I reprogram you, that's when you become conscious creator. Because your consciousness creates your reality, which is why the pattern ingrained in your consciousness is creating the same outcome over and over again for you. This is why. Okay. 
Once we reprogram you, you start to create a different reality. Don't no longer seek validation. Be unapologetic about what it is that you want, okay? So like I said, we've unraveled, what we do is we unravel your very existence. We pull at that thread, your operating system, and we give you a soul upgrade. Because what happens is, once we complete the lesson by healing the soul wound, understanding why this keeps happening to you, right? I then heal the wound, let go of the suffering. I clear all the karmic connections, all the soul contracts all the oaths, all the promises. Say, for example, you lost someone in a previous lifetime and you said, that's it, I'm never going to love again. That's considered a soul contract, a vow, an oath and a promise. And in this lifetime, that could be why you're not attracting love. Say, for example, you was a healer and, some, well, for me, in a past life, somebody died and I said, that's it, I'm never going to heal again. And I blocked my um, gifts to healing in this lifetime until I cleared that and I awakened it up in the last few years. Um, karmic connections are for the purpose of evolution and to learn lessons okay we attract situations into our lives over and over again to learn lessons and they create karmic connections and then what happens is until we clear those karmic connections it keeps happening it keeps happening we have to complete the lesson we have to heal the wound and we have to clear those connections and that's what unraveled really does and then we reprogram you and we upgrade your operating system and what happens is your soul essentially has an upgrade an evolutionary cycle completes an evolutionary cycle and you have an upgrade of the soul and then your soul no longer needs to attract those situations into your life because you no longer need to complete that lesson and that's how it works you'll understand a lot more about how your soul lessons work and what's been happening in your life and I think that's the biggest thing to understand understanding why it's happening understanding why you feel the way you do understanding the repeated situations the repeated people and what happens in your life when you clear this now I know this class has been a little while so I'm just going to very briefly very very briefly talk about my story just for any of you that don't know who I am I'm just going to whiz through this okay but I work with energy now I'm a multi-dimensional healer I am also a hypnosis therapist I'm an NLP practitioner and I'm also a mindset and life coach and anyone who knows me way before knows that I used to be a party girl in London. Um, I was trapped in a dancing job that I hated. Um, I was full of self-doubt. I was a binge drinker. I used to get on it all the time. I had no confidence, but I was really loud. And I used to overcompensate, and it was fake confidence, really. I sabotaged everything. And I actually had depression, and, and I was an insom insomniac. And I actually didn't like myself very much. And then seven years ago, I moved to Ibiza with my partner and I started to um, change my life. I became a yoga teacher and I started to do retreats and I started to do all the things, you know. But in Ibiza, I was happy because I lived this so-called dream life. But I wanted more. My heart has always wanted more, always wanted more, always wanted more. OK, and I often used to look at my ex and I used to think, could I be happy with someone else? And I really could. But I didn't really feel that I had the strength to let go because I had fear that there wasn't better out there for me, okay? I was, I didn't trust in the magic. I didn't trust that there was better out there for me. So I clung onto that relationship a little bit longer than what I should have. And I wanted more. And I really felt that we both settled in that relationship a little bit. We did have a lot of love for each other in the beginning, but it got to the point where we were settling a little bit because I was doing things that I didn't even want to do. I was going hiking all the time. I like hiking once in a while, but I don't want to go every weekend. And I really started to lose myself. I lost my confidence and I changed who I am to make, meet his needs. And I wanted more passion. I want someone that understood me more. Here we go, another couple of typos. Two, not bad for me, pretty good for me. But I was going through all these big upgrades, right? And he couldn't understand or handle it, the upgrades that I was going through. Um, I got sick. I ended up with breast cancer. And I managed to heal myself. I had a lump in my breast, a tumour. I managed to heal myself. I managed to do the work. I was All my gifts were getting awakened. I was going through massive awakenings. Like, oh, my God, it was so intense. All my, everything was opening up for me. But in the meantime, my relationship broke down. My relationship did break down, okay? And it got to the point where for two years before my relationship broke down, I was breaking soul contracts. I was clearing my entire ancestral line. I was fighting off attacks constantly from darkness. I was clearing karma. And what had happened, it had created my whole reality to shift. And at the time, I was like, oh, my God, I'm losing everything. I'm, I'm sick. 
uh, this has happened, that's happened. And it's not the work that got me sick. Let's just make that clear. I got sick anyway. That's something that happened to me personally. I believe I got sick because I was supposed to show people that we can have the power to heal ourselves and it can be done. And it was part of my abandonment wounds from a child. I had big abandonment wounds. I had big wounds around not feeling good enough. I had big wounds around past life wounds around not feeling safe. I had ancestral feminine wounds around women losing their voice, the feminine Chinese lion. And it was a big, deep ancestral trauma that I was carrying um, that I needed to heal. So that was something that was completely different. That's just my lineage and that's just my that's just my soul and my story, you know. But I, during this, as I was trying to heal myself, I had to break a lot of soul contracts and I had to clear my ancestral line because of obviously all, all the ancestral trauma that was coming in. And I had to clear a lot of karma and my whole reality just started to shift and my relationship finished. So I moved to Bali and I've been here for seven months now. And now I actually feel so fully healed in Bali and empowered. I feel like I'm ready to move on somewhere else next month. So I've got five more weeks here and then I'm ready to go back to Europe. And I am ready to um, create, sorry, I thought it was a spider on my foot. <laughs> I'm ready to create something even more amazing. I'm really excited about it because, yeah. But I moved to Bali because I'd created a life of freedom and I can go wherever I want and I can do whatever everything that I want and looking back I can see there was so many things wrong with my life before and this needed to happen because now I've created such a better existence than what I've ever had and this is for the first time who I truly am being me and I feel the most empowered and the most worthy and the most full of self-love that I've ever felt I've always wanted so much more from my life, but I was abandoning my own needs and desires. I'd settled. I wasn't happy as I'd convinced myself to be. I felt trapped. My heart yearned for more. And I was constantly reaching outside of myself for happiness. And that included my ex-boyfriend, my partner, because I lacked self-trust, because I had a lot of fear, because I had a lot of regret. I had a lot of shame and I couldn't see the gifts in it then. It's only now I've done the work that I can see the gifts because I was releasing and shedding so much and I was changing my entire existence. I was basically stripping myself bare and awakening with so much energy and discovering all these gifts that it put me in a bit of a dark place for a while. But actually now I look back and I'm like, oh my God, I've integrated so much shadow. I've created, I've, I'm, I have so much light now. I have so much to give because there's been these common themes, okay, in my life, which were fear of failure, fear of judgment from others, perfectionism, self-sabotage, negative thought patterns, low self-worth and not feeling good enough, right? These were the common themes in my life. And I had programming and patterns around all of these themes, all around wounds, around self-love and self-worth. But these were the patterns that were showing up in my life. And I was repeating these patterns over and over because they were ingrained. And we have five levels of consciousness, six levels of consciousness, conscious mind and the subconscious mind, which is what mindset works with but I go into the ancestral DNA, generational consciousness. We have another layer of consciousness where all the wounds from our family, the beliefs are stored there. Then we have your past life consciousness, which is another layer of consciousness and all the wounds of your past life have created beliefs that are stored there. And then we have a collective consciousness society and we are also plugged into that, okay? So I go and I clear the programming in all those levels of consciousness. And that is why the work is so, so, so deep because it didn't matter what I tried. I tried everything. But until I removed the programming that was controlling my behavior, I just couldn't seem to move past my fears, which is why I was overwhelmed. I kept repeating stories as to why I couldn't do it. I hid from the world and I procrastinated. And that's why I started to do the deep, deep work. And I started to get really aligned with my vision and my soul purpose. And I really removed the blocks that were standing in my way so I could create this amazing life where I can go wherever I want. I have met someone. I met someone straight after my relationship and I met my twin flame connection. So by removing my karmic relationship and the karma, it allowed me to meet my twin flame connection, which is my unconditional um, infinite love across all lifetime souls, dimensions, spaces, realities, you know, 
if I hadn't removed my karmic connection, my ex-boyfriend, that relationship, if that hadn't have broken down, I never would have been able to meet my twin flame. And there is no love like a twin flame love. And it is also part of my soul evolution and journey because a twin flame journey is not just about love. It's about your own evolution of consciousness. And it's propelled me to another level and awakened so many more of my gifts since I met him. So now I can do so much more and I'm so much more aligned with my purpose and my soul journey. So, you know, removing all those limiting beliefs that were making me feel like I couldn't. There's so much that I have to give now. There's so much that I have to give. And it's not just about finding my purpose, but it's about that journey and unraveling the gifts along the way. More and more of my soul gifts awaken. Each week, more things, visions, this, that, you know, working with past lives, working with ancestral, going into different dimensions and clearing karma, breaking spells, breaking vows, clearing cords and connections to past relationships. All of that stuff is stuff that's just awakening, awakening and awakening me each time. Shifting big, deep, energetic blocks, you know, shifting my mindset and my consciousness from lack to abundance, from lack to prosperity and rewriting my story of who I am and what I could do. So the big aha moment came when I realized that the only thing that was standing in my power was really putting everything outside of me. And it was really all down to my self-worth and my lack of unconditional self-love. And this is what you have to gain, yeah? All of these things, alignment, freedom, self-belief, self-love, self-worth, better relationships, better partners, better sex life, more confidence, loving your body more, more peace, more peace of mind, more self-trust, being able to walk away from situations that don't serve you, being able to wake up every day and go for what it is that you want, feeling good about yourself, feeling excited about the day ahead when you wake up. Yeah, all these things don't mean nothing, but look at the physical reality of your life of how that will change. Yeah, confidence, self-belief, self-worth, that don't mean nothing, but waking up every day and thinking like, yeah, I fucking love my life. I can't wait to get up and get started on what I'm doing today. Oh my God, I can't wait to go to work today. Oh my God, I can't wait to do this. Oh my God, I can't wait to do that. Waking up and looking around and being like, I fucking love my life. I love myself. I feel good looking in the mirror. I love my body. Like, I'm the nuts. I'm the shit. I'm powerful. Oh my God, I love my friends. I, I love my relationship. I love being with this man. Oh, this is what I want. These are the things that it's going to bring to your life, okay? And you're going to let go of all the pain and the fear and the doing things that don't work for you and the sabotage and the perfectionism. So I'm not going to go too much more into this because I've been talking for long enough, but remember your behavior is a coping mechanism to deal with a wound. Your sabotaging behavior and your procrastination and self-doubt is a coping mechanism to deal with a wound, okay? So... What is your vision or dream? And if everything that was standing in your way was magically removed, what would you be doing? How would you want to feel? What would life look and feel to you if you was to remove all of that? If you, when I put your hands on your heart earlier on and you, you revealed to yourself your heart's deep in longings, when you wake up in the morning, how would you feel? What would life look like? How would you feel when you open your eyes? What's the first thing you would do? What would you do every day? How would you feel every day? How would you dress every day? What would you be doing? How much money would you be making? What kind of men would you have in your life? What kind of women would you have in your life? What kind of friendships? How would you feel about your body? What clothes would you be wearing? What food would you be eating? What holidays would you be going on? Where would you be going? Who would you be going with? What car would you be driving? You know, all of that stuff. I want you to think about that. If I was to remove all this shit, all the fear, all the self-doubt, what would you be doing? How would life look and feel to you every single day? If you could recreate your life to look exactly the way you wanted, how amazing would that be? And if you managed to think what you thought wasn't possible was possible, how amazing would that be? Because I didn't think the life that I was living was possible, and it is. Anything is possible. Anything is possible, right? Anything. And that's what we need to remember, right? Anything is possible. But first of all, we need to heal the wounds. We need to heal the wounds and we need to reprogram. So that was really, I hope that was helpful. I want to show you something, right? Here we go. I just want to very briefly, to finish off, two minutes of your time, right, before I close. And then we'll close. Okay, can I present this? Yes. Boom. 
There we go. Right. Unraveled is your journey to self-worth. And it's for the woman who just doesn't feel good enough. Or any of the things that I explained just now. There you go. Because the self-worth wound is what is keeping you attracting these situations into your life, okay? Identifying and clearing your unconscious patterns that are keeping you stuck in an unwanted or negative cycle or creating or attracting a reality that is causing you heartache, anxiety, pain, or suffering. This is about removing what is causing you pain and suffering. This is about removing what is causing you to feel shit every day. This is about removing your deepest, darkest issues and problems. What is it that is causing you to suffer? Is it the fact that you wake up and you're depressed every day? Is it the fact that you're worried that you're never going to make anything out of your life? Is it that you just don't feel deeply, deeply good enough? Is it that you attract painful relationships, that it hurts, that you just, whatever it is, what is that pain and suffering that you are feeling? What is causing you pain in your life right now? Think about it, because that's what it's going to remove. Like I said, I'm not going to go into this again, because I'm talking about how your mind serves you to repeat patterns caused by the soul wounds that you are carrying with your soul. And this could be wounds around self-worth, self-love, heartbreak, pain, empowerment, trust, any trauma, childhood wounds, ancestral wounds, generational wounds, patterns along the family line, past life wounds, karmic wounds, soul contracts, oaths, promises, vows. We cover it all. We go into it all. Dissolving tires, hooks, cords, the people, places, memories across all timelines, dimensions, spaces, realities of your soul. There's nothing that we don't cover. We go so deep, so deep. Yeah, so, so, so deep. Unravel means to be known, to be understood, to be free from complication and difficulty, to be made plain and clear, to be released from your agreements and contracts. And the opposite to unraveled is to be entangled, yeah? To be entangled into something that you don't want to be entangled to, a situation, a life experience, a person, a circumstance, to be untangled, entangled. So unraveling is peeling back the layers and going deep into your patterns and releasing them. And this is for you. I'm just going to quickly read through this. If you're attracting the same type of partner or relationships, your past relationships have left you feeling wounded, broken, or not good enough. You never feel good enough or you just don't feel like you're enough. You don't feel deserving of happiness or love. You're afraid that if anything good comes into your life, it will be taken away from you or you'll lose it. No matter what you do differently, you always get the same outcome. You're stuck in a cycle of repeating patterns in your life and you know it. You sabotage relationships and opportunities and anything that comes your way. You've lost your confidence, your self-esteem and you put yourself down. You always expect the worst to happen or something bad is going to happen. You let how others treat you or dictate to you how you feel about yourself. You're afraid of change, failure, and taking risks, and you doubt yourself. You can't seem to get over your ex or something that's happened in your past. You don't believe in yourself. You don't believe in love or relationships anymore. And part of you deep down believes the happiness that you seek is not possible for you. you. Never get the outcome that you want, and you think you might be cursed. You overthink, you overanalyze, and you feel like you're always doing something wrong and you have self-doubt that is affecting all areas of your life. And what you walk away with is breaking that cycle that you're stuck in. No more sabotaging fearful or avoidant behavior. Trusting in yourself and the decisions that you make and confidence in yourself, believing in yourself and knowing and trusting that you are doing everything that is right and everything is working out for you perfectly. Feeling whole and complete again and not feeling less than, feeling like you are enough. No longer attracting partners and relationships and people that are not giving you what you want or need. Knowing that you're worthy and really feeling it. Yeah. Feeling like you can move on from your pain in your past. Less attachment and desire for your ex, a past relationship or something that you used to have. Happy and fulfilled with yourself and satisfied with life. Feeling like you're doing everything right, not second guessing your choices and knowing and trusting in your life and not worrying or expecting that anything bad is going to happen. So you can have peace of mind in your decisions and be optimistic about your future. OK, and this is the last bit. Unraveled is a four week one to one program. 
It's a one-to-one -one program delivered that is a journey into your soul patterns and negative cycles. And we look at your karmic cycles, your soul contracts, and your ego patterns that you identify with that are keeping you stuck, attracting these unwanted outcomes. So this is done four weeks one-to-one -one with me. It's not a group program. This is one-to-one, -one, okay? And what we do is we clear everything. We clear everything and then we reprogram you. We clear everything and we reprogram you in, those, in that time that we have together. Now, I'm just going to quickly... Here we go. You have a weekly session with me, one-to-one, -one, and then you get your feedback. And this is where we do the healing and we work through everything and the reprogramming. So just quickly, I'm going to tell you the price of it very, very, very quickly. And then I'm going to let you go. Okay. And I do do payment plans for this as well. Okay, so here is the page here. 599 painful. Not bad to change your life. 325, two installments or 215 in three installments. So you have a choice of a payment plan as well. So what I've done is I've added the link at the bottom of this email. You should have the link. If you want to join me for Unraveled, I'd love to have you join me. Um, this is one-to-one. -one. This is not a group program. This is one-to-one. -one. You get my undivided attention. That's a really good price for one-to-one -one because I normally charge more for my one-to-one. -one. You get my undivided attention. You get me and you one-to-one, face-to-face, working through your stuff. This is life-changing stuff. This is soul-changing stuff because we go so, so deep. So I know that this class has been a little while, but I hope I've given you so much value today to overcome your self-doubt, to understand why you, self you doubt yourself, to understand how you can overcome your little self-doubt, procrastination and sabotaging behaviours and what to do if you want to go deeper and the reason why you doubt yourself in the first place and how you can change your reality. So thank you so much for joining me. I love doing these classes. I really, really, really love them. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope to see you in Unraveled. And if not, I have so many other free offers as well. Please feel free to just always hit me up. And please let me know your feedback on this. Let me know how you get on with this class. I want to know. Reply to the email. Send me some feedback. Chat to me. Let me know what's going on. So, yeah, once again, I'm just going to say thank you once again. And I love you lots. <laughs>